I know I'm late making this video, but I just had shingles and it was it was really bad. Whatever, leave me alone. There's a new company called Beacon that just released their first lineup of audio gear for streamers. If you don't know Beacon, they were started by some of the same guys that brought you the GoXLR. And we've got their two new audio mixers, the Beacon Mix and the Beacon Mix Create, as well as a new USB mic called the Beacon Mic, which is what you're listening to right now. And guys, I gotta be honest with you, but I'm actually gonna be selling all of mine. Yeah, they sent it to me in white and I really wanted a black one. I'm just messing with you. I really like what Beacon is doing, but I do realize that there's a huge number of people out there who are sick of all of these expensive audio devices coming out when all you want to do is mix your audio for your stream. So let me give you the TLDR. Beacon is doing a fantastic job with all of these devices but I don't think they're finished. Well, actually, maybe unfinished is a little bit too harsh. Let's just say they need some time to mature. How many of you remember when the original Stream Deck came out? Because I remember that there were no pages, no multi-actions, you couldn't even make folders, but now you can control your lighting, mix your audio, even control your cameras, and it's just so much more of a fleshed out system compared to when it first released. That's where I feel like Beacon is today. I think these Beacon devices, specifically the two mixers, are really great pieces of hardware that could be made even better with a few software updates. So instead of making a review that's just disguised as marketing for Beacon, I thought it'd be a good idea to talk about some of the ideas Beacon can implement to make their lineup a better value proposition for you guys. Hey, you. I know you've been listening to Avril Lavigne on your stream. What is this, 2003? You know you're not supposed to be doing that. You're going to get your stream taken down. And that's why this video is sponsored by Pretzel. Pretzel is a service that has a huge library of music that is safe to use in your YouTube videos and your Twitch streams. You're probably already aware of that huge wave of DMCA takedowns that happened a while back where a bunch of streamers had their accounts suspended for playing copyrighted music. Well, everything on Pretzel is 100% safe to use in your content, so you never have to worry about having a video demonetized or worse, having your Twitch account suspended. As of today, they have over 400,000 songs that are safe to use on Twitch from a range of genres from lo-fi, to EDM to even metal and because it's a music service designed for streamers it has a few neat features like no ads and the ability to post a currently playing song into Twitch chat. So if you want to try out Pretzel check them out in the link down below. The free tier gives you access to a smaller library of 40,000 songs but if you use my link you can get access to the whole library of 400,000 songs for 20% off. I think that's it. Okay cool let's let's do the video now. Okay, so I'll briefly talk about all of the Beacon products, but I'm pretty sure you've already seen like the 50 other unboxings, so I'll try to keep this part short. We'll start with the Beacon mic. Inside the box, you get the most neatly wrapped USB-C to C cable I've ever seen. It looks like a garden hose. There's also a USB-A adapter for your computer and an extension cable for the headphone jack built into the mic. The mic itself looks really clean, very similar to the Shure SM7B, except on the back, you have a headphone jack for monitoring your audio, and a USB port to connect it to your computer. So this is a standalone device. You don't need a mixer. You can connect it directly into your computer. Oddly enough, there are no dials or knobs to adjust the volume on the headphone jack, which I thought was really weird. And I feel as though they did that on purpose so that you buy one of the next two devices. So the first one you got is the Beacon Mix, which is sort of an audio mixer that's designed more for general use and not really for streamers. It's got four clickable dials on the front and a huge screen, which you'll see more of later. The back has a single USB-C port to connect it to your PC using the included USB-C cable but there's no headphone jacks and there's no XLR port. So you're not plugging a mic into this thing at all. Now the Beacon Mix Create, this one is more designed for streamers. So it looks like a very similar device, but you have four more extra buttons underneath all of the dials, as well as a few more on the side for extra streaming functionality. Fun fact, these two mixers use the exact same angle as the Stream Deck. And I know they did that on purpose because they look so nice next to each other on your desk, except the, the Mix Create looks like they didn't finish it like what is this dude fill in the rest of this hole with something all right now we're gonna take a closer look at each device we'll start with the beacon mix because this is the easiest device to understand you know how windows has that audio mixer thing that lets you adjust the volume for each of your different running programs that's pretty much what the beacon mix is just in physical form you don't get any features for streamers no adjusting stream audio none of that the dials are just there to adjust what you hear in your headphones. That's not a bad thing, by the way. They have a really slick drag and drop interface, so you can just drag each of your running programs to assign them to a dial. It's just that 
that's really all that it does. You can also drag your microphone to any of the dials so you can use it to adjust the gain of your mic or mute your mic. But even though the mix looks very similar to the mix create, the way that it's presented in software is totally different but we'll talk more about the crate later. Let's talk about the Beacon mic now. The Beacon mic is a USB microphone, but it's also a dynamic microphone. So it's gonna do a pretty good job of rejecting background noise and focusing just on your voice. As far as sound quality goes, I mean, it is what it is. You don't need me to tell you whether you think this mic sounds good or not. You can judge for yourself if you like the mic. You're not eight years old anymore, unless you are eight. Wish I could forge shit like this when I was eight. I know there was this whole controversy of Beacon not releasing their frequency response graphs and a whole bunch of audio enthusiasts talking about how the mic sounds overprocessed. It sounds completely overcompressed. It sounds choked like almost in a bottle or something. It sounds bad on top of the fact that the- At the end of the day, is the mic quality bad enough that people are gonna leave your stream because of it? No. They're gonna leave your stream because you just play Roblox for like eight hours without saying anything. Why'd you buy a mic for like $300 if you're not even gonna talk into it except mumble or something? The real value of the Beacon mic is the software that it comes with. It gives you so much control over your audio and how your audio sounds. Like it has an equalizer so you can adjust every single frequency of your mic. It has a built-in compressor to make sure your audio doesn't get too loud or too quiet. There's a built-in expander to cut out some of the room noise like your PC fans. It even has a built-in noise suppressor, which to my ears works a little bit better than the one built into OBS. I just turned on my air conditioning so we can test the noise suppression that's built into the Beacon mic and let's compare it to the noise suppression filter that's built right into OBS. This is a sample using the built-in noise suppression for OBS Studio, and this is a sample using the Beacon Mic's noise suppression filter using the snapshot setting. None of this stuff is really groundbreaking. You can easily install some free VST plugins and get the same sort of control, but for any mic. But it's really the way that it's all presented that makes the overall package appealing. I love the real-time view of your audio so you can see the actual waveform of your mic over time, and this meter that shows how much of your audio is being compressed while you're speaking. It's a really intuitive system that makes it really easy for you to visualize how your audio is being processed throughout the whole signal chain. I love this little record button that lets you quickly take a sample of your audio so you can really fine tune your audio. Follow me on only nuts. 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 Follow me. Just if you're going to make a beacon mic too, can you put a dial in it? Because it, it drives me up the wall that I'm not able to adjust the headphone out on the mic from the mic itself. Now, let's move on to the Mix Create because this is the one that I really wanted to talk about. I know it looks a lot like the Mix, but I'm telling you, it's a completely different device. Don't think of the Mix Create as a traditional audio interface because that's not what it is. You can't even plug a mic into it. It just has a single USB-C port on the back. All it is is a physical interface that controls a software digital mixer. If you've ever used voice meter before, think of it like that, but with physical controls. Also not a piece of shit. So with the Beacon software, you can assign each of your different running programs to each of the dials and then use the dials to adjust the volume for each one. And what's nice about it is they give you two separate mixes. You have your personal mix, which is what you hear in your headphones or your speakers, and you have your audience mix, which is what your stream hears. And you can adjust each of those mixes completely separately. You wanna listen to music in your headphones, but not have that go out to your stream? You can do that. You want to turn up your game audio in your headphones, but turn it down in your stream? You can do that as well. It works very similarly to the Elgato Wave XLR. So like the Wave XLR, you still need to go into your Windows settings. And then for each of your different programs, you need to route all your audio to the Mix Create. So now your Beacon software does all of the mixing for all of your audio. So you can adjust the volume for each of the channels. And once you've mixed everything together, it all gets piped out into OBS as a single channel. And this is the first big problem that I have with the Mix Create. And by the way, it's the same problem that I have with the Wave XLR and Voice Meter. I just spat. I hope that didn't show on camera. Once you have all your audio mashed together as a single audio source, there's no way to split it up again. So like, let's say I want to have a setup where I've got a gameplay scene that has my game audio and my microphone, but then I switch over to a BRB screen that doesn't have my game audio or my microphone and then kicks in like some background music. 
you can't set that up if everything is mashed together. The other thing is OBS has this feature if you're doing a recording where you can record audio to multiple different tracks. So I can actually set up OBS to record my gameplay audio on a separate track and then my music on a separate track so that later in post when I'm editing a video, I can get rid of that music track entirely and keep my clean gameplay audio. The easiest way for Beacon to fix this is just to add OBS support because that way you can assign each of the different audio sources in OBS to any of the dials and then you can just use the dials to adjust the volume level directly inside of OBS. There's actually a plugin that you can install for OBS that will allow you to just add in individual audio sources for individual programs. So you can have an audio source dedicated just for Chrome and then another one for Spotify and then another one for all of your games. So in theory, if Beacon just added OBS support, then you just be able to adjust those audio sources in OBS using the dials on the mix create. Okay, so I'm not even kidding. I just finished rendering this video and then Beacon released a new software update that adds a VOD track. So now we can set up an entirely separate track that has different sources of audio. So maybe we'll have all my audio minus my music and then I can add this VOD track inside of OBS. So I'll leave a link to Beacon's video that shows you how to set that up. But uh, yeah, good job Beacon. Now let's talk about that display. Now, one of the things I found really strange was they put this massive, beautiful screen on both of their mixers, but I feel like the screen is just really underutilized. Like, don't get me wrong, the screens are amazing. I feel like they took the criticism of the bad screens on the Go XLR and just like completely overcompensated for that because like these screens are a million times better than the ones in the Go XLR. But I feel as though they don't really show that much information considering how big they are. For example, the screens do show the audio level for each of your different channels, but it only shows it for your personal mix or your audience mix. Like, why not show both audio levels for both your separate mixes at the same time? Like, maybe you can replace these big circular graphs with two bar graphs so that you can see your personal mix's audio level and your audience mix's audio level at the same time rather than having to use this button just to see how loud your audience mix is. Now, the Mix Crate has a really cool feature where you can hold down on any of the four dials and it will swap your audio between your headphones and your speakers. But there's nothing on the displays themselves that indicates what device you're actually listening to. So there's been a number of times where I've gone to put my headphones on thinking I'm going to hear audio, but then the audio actually comes out of my speakers. Speaking of the dials, let's actually talk about them for a minute. So what I think would be really cool is if they added a master slider. So at the moment, if I want to turn down the volume in my headphones, then I have to go to every single channel and turn the knob down for every single one of them. I think it would be cool if I can assign one of the dials to be like a master slider and I can just turn that one down and it will turn down every single channel. But really the biggest issue I have with the dials is you have the ability to click into them, but clicking them doesn't actually do anything. Except for that thing earlier where I said, you can click into it to change the output device. But other than that, like clicking into it doesn't do anything. Why don't you build in some functionality there? Like, I don't know, what if the dials act as like a solo button? So when I click into one of the dials, it will solo that channel. So if I want to listen to just my game audio, I can click in the dial and all the other channels will be muted. The Beacon software has this really cool feature where you can click this lock button and it will lock the audience mix and the personal mix together so that when you turn the dial, it adjusts both mixes at the same time and then you can unlock it to adjust them independently. Why don't you just use the click on the dial to flip that lock button instead of having us go into the software to unlock it? I think that would just make a lot of sense. Or I don't know, it just gives media controls, you know? So we can skip to the next track or pause our music, something, okay? Just give us anything. Cause it just feels really weird that you can click into the buttons, but clicking it doesn't actually do anything. Just kidding, I'm an idiot. The new update has a new feature where you can click into the knobs as sort of a secondary mute mode. So now when you click into the knobs, it will mute both the personal mix and the audience mix. And then you can still use the mute button as an addressable mute mode. So you can set it to mute just your personal mix or just your audience mix, or as well as a mute all function. Now, in fairness to Beacon, a lot of the features I just suggested are already on their roadmap for 2022. So we should be seeing a lot of this stuff by the end of the year. Having said that, we still have no idea what these features will look like, even if Beacon does add them in the future. So 
If it were me and I was just a regular user and not some biased YouTuber that got free stuff from the company, I would wait. Give Beacon a little bit more time to polish up their software and mature their platform a little bit more. It's always a bad idea to buy a product based on what the company promises they'll give you later down the line through a software update. Because we all know just how bad that can go. Now, I know there's still a large portion of you guys that are super annoyed at another YouTuber pushing all of this expensive audio hardware down your throats when all you want is a very simple way to split up your audio for your stream. I have a solution for you guys, but we're gonna have to save that for another video. So if you wanna see that, make sure to subscribe because uh, I wanna feel those endorphins, you know? You know when you like make a Twitter post and then everyone likes it and you're like, yeah, I did that. I wanna have that feeling. Anyway, thanks again, Pretzel, for sponsoring this video. And guys, again, check out the links down below if you wanna check out their huge library of DMCA safe music. But until next time, have a good day.